Hello, I'm Michael Face. I'm a professor of psychiatry at the Perelman School of Medicine and director of the Mood and Anxiety Program at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Our goal today is to provide you with scientific and clinical updates on the management of bipolar disorder, with a focus on accelerating the diagnosis and improving the treatment of depressive episodes in these patients. Now, let's first take a look at how aberrant emotional processing may contribute to the clinical manifestations of bipolar disorder. Normally, when we are presented with a potentially emotive stimulus, our brains identify and evaluate relevant internal and external cues that define the emotional significance of that stimulus. This results in an immediate overall affective state characterized by specific autonomic neuroendocrine and somatomotor responses. The brain, however, also has a fairly complex set of feedback systems that ensure our behaviors and affective responses are appropriate in the context of everything else in the environment. Looking at a simplified neuroanatomical model of emotional processing, limbic and subcortical regions, such as the amygdala and insula, function to appraise the emotional salience of a given stimulus and induce our initial affective outputs. Thus, neurons in the amygdala are activated when we are presented with an emotionally important stimulus, whereas conscious attempts to suppress the resulting emotional response will decrease this neural activity, suggesting feedback regulation from higher brain areas. This regulation of limbic activity originates in cortical regions such as the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex, which perform cognitive reappraisal of the initial affective state, integrating information from other brain areas to determine whether the intensity of the response is appropriate. Neurons in the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex therefore show increased activation both in response to the initial emotional stimulus and when an individual tries to reduce the evoked emotional output. Aberrations in these regions and in their reciprocal connections may interfere with the ability of patients with bipolar disorder to maintain emotional homeostasis. Brain imaging of patients with bipolar disorder has supported this hypothesis by showing relative hyperactivation in subcortical and limbic structures, including the amygdala, which is thought to reflect a state of elevated emotional reactivity. Conversely, hypoactivation in the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex suggests an impaired ability to provide feedback regulation of emotional responses. Other experimental techniques have demonstrated that neural circuits containing the amygdalae and prefrontal cortices of patients with bipolar disorder are characterized by changes in effective connectivity, a measure of the ability of neural activity in one region to modulate the activity in another region. Taken together, these findings provide neuroanatomic support for dysregulated activity and deficient connections within and between brain areas involved in cognitive and emotional processing, which may produce bipolar disorders hallmark symptoms of depression and mania or hypomania. Moreover, the lack of limbic modulation may place these patients at risk for mixed mood states and sudden switching between mood poles. Not surprisingly, proper emotional processing and the required connectivity between the relevant brain regions critically depend on appropriately balanced neurotransmitter systems. Dysregulated monoamine, glutamate, and GABA or gamma aminobutyric acid levels, as well as altered receptor expression profiles, have all been implicated in bipolar disorder neurobiology. For example, some evidence suggests that manic episodes are associated with increased dopaminergic neurotransmission, which reduces dopaminergic receptor sensitivity and depletes neurotransmitter levels over time. The resulting imbalance may clinically manifest as a switch into a depressive state, which lingers as patients struggle to recover from the depleted neurotransmitter levels. Much of the evidence for the roles of different neurotransmitters in psychiatric diseases has been derived from receptor binding profiles of effective medications. For example, second generation antipsychotics modulate a range of neurotransmitter systems via interactions with specific subtypes of receptors, including dopaminergic, adrenergic, serotonergic, histaminergic, and muscarinic receptors. 
Aberrations in these signaling pathways have been tied to many of the clinical symptoms of bipolar disorder, including impulsivity, psychomotor dysregulation, sleep disturbances, suicidality, cognitive dysfunction, and depression, among others. Although we are a long way from concretely tying localized neurotransmitter changes to mood instability and other manifestations of bipolar disorder, researchers have begun to hypothesize how different drug affinities for different receptor subtypes may mechanistically explain mood-stabilizing antidepressant and adverse effect profiles of certain agents. For example, certain second-generation antipsychotics that are effective in bipolar disorder are partial agonists for serotonin 1A receptors and antagonists for serotonin 2A receptors, which together may increase dopamine levels in mesolimbic and prefrontal regions and induce an antidepressant effect. Mood stabilization may result from reduced dopamine signaling in other brain areas via concurrent antagonism of dopamine 2 receptors. A pharmacologic activity that is not observed with unimodal antidepressants, some of which have been tied to switching into manic or hypomanic states. Alternatively, the antipsychotic olanzapine shows a high affinity for histaminergic or H1 and muscarinic M1 and M3 receptors, two neurotransmitter systems that have been linked to increased food intake, metabolic impairment, and sedation. Indeed, olanzapine is associated with high risk for weight gain and impaired metabolic parameters in patients with bipolar disorder. On the other hand, the antipsychotic lorazidone strongly interacts with dopamine 2 and serotonin 2A receptors with little affinity for H1 and M1 receptors, which may explain its efficacy profile and relatively low risk for weight gain and other metabolic disturbances. Although these and other studies have provided initial anatomic and neurochemical insights into the altered emotional processing that we observe clinically in bipolar disorder, the precise neurobiologic mechanisms that trigger manic or depressive mood episodes or sudden transitions between opposite mood poles remain to be elucidated. A better understanding of these processes may help us develop medications with improved efficacy or tolerability profiles or better match the available therapeutic agents to certain patient populations or disease subtypes. Thank you for your time today and enjoy the remainder of the program.